Bob Rowe is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Northwestern Energy, headquartered in Montana. Welcome to the broadcast. Big sky country, big ideas. Big sky country, big ideas, big ambitions. It's an honor to be here speaking with an icon. No, 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 no. Um, what is the this organization? Well, the, 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 I'm told that you're the head of this uh, what is it called? Sure, the Institute for Energy Innovation uh, is, I think of it as the light cavalry within the EEI family. It's been an important part of EEI for almost a decade. Started with a focus on energy efficiency, continues to have that, uh, but now has, has moved into uh, really understanding from a very practical sense how utilities are partnering with technology companies to improve uh, service uh, to our customers. I'm going to throw at you several challenges that utilities have faced sure. and find out whether there are ideas to deal with them. Line losses, uh, they're not huge in this country, but nonetheless a certain amount of electricity is lost in simply sending it long. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been looking at cryogenic, which is cold transmission, uh, it hasn't really arrived. Uh, we've looked at uh, uh, perfect uh, uh, resistance-free transmission. There have been lots of hopeful experiments. Nothing has happened. Uh, there's always resistance in the wire. Uh, how do you deal with that one? Well, at the, at the transmission level, uh, there's, there's actually been an awful lot of technology uh, deployed to Im improve the stability and the, the control, essentially the dispatchability of the transmission system. One of the exciting things over the last few years is technologies that are relatively far along in deployment at the transmission level are cost effectively scalable. Does at any the of these stand level. out as being uh, superconductivity of some kind? But the, the very practical application at the distribution level is simply uh, optimizing. Uh, the volt vars performance, so you have to, you don't, you don't have to send as much uh, electricity down a long distribution line, and, and as a result, can maintain power quality to the end use customer uh, without as much uh, generation at, at the at the head end. So that's a technology uh, that, again, as as it became more more functional, more dis more deployable at small scale. Uh, and more uh, cost effective uh, begins to make sense. I think we, we have the obligation as basically as, as stewards of the nation's most essential uh, of all critical infrastructures to be forward looking, uh, but you want to be, I think, on the, not on, not on the bleeding edge, probably the, the phrase fast follower, and you, you want to be mindful of quality, reliability, safety, and affordability. Getting all of those balanced is, is My is, second is challenge spot. is storage. How is storage coming, and are you able to improve it? The storage of electricity being almost an oxymoron. You can't store it in a, on a shelf, so to speak. Sure, uh, and certainly not yet in a, in a cost-effective way. Uh, many companies now are looking at storage. Uh, I think the honest answer is, in general uh, deployment, storage is not yet cost effective. In specific applications, it can make a lot of sense. So for example, uh, a particular application, particular customer where there's a, a very high reliability um, expectation, storage might, might well make sense. As part of a microgrid, it might well make sense. At Northwestern, uh, we have a, a very, very large service territory, uh, much of South Dakota, most of Montana, uh, Yellowstone Park in, in, in Wyoming. We're looking at uh, actually storage uh, combined with solar to help us uh, address uh, reliability on long rural radial lines. Uh, don't know whether it's it's cost effective yet, but that's exactly the kind of thing that we and other companies are trying to find out. Finally, electric transportation. We've heard from Elon Musk. He talks about it as though it's almost here. It's been a pipe dream for 
many decades. At one time there were quite a few electric options. The great shop in London, Harrods, had electric yeah. carts delivering, but they, they were lead acid batteries and they were slow and they finally abandoned them. Uh, I think they abandoned them in the 1960s and started in 1924. And then there was a hiatus. And now suddenly we have a surge of interest mm -hmm. in pure electric mm -hmm. vehicles. Are you excited? I am. I am very excited. I, I, I love the uh, comment I've heard that you might uh, buy an EV uh, to help save the planet, uh, but you drive it because they're awfully fun to drive. Uh, and uh, in our part of the world, we see relatively fewer, but we're we're beginning to see them. Personally, uh, what I I'm uh, looking for is something that has all-wheel drive, because of where I live. Uh, and something that does have adequate range. Uh, but we're, we're beginning to see uh, more and more of them, not just on the coasts, but in the interior as well. What about induction charging? The, there is a way of uh, not attaching to the, the charger, mm -hmm. but to drive the vehicle over it. In South Korea... Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. In South Korea, the bus stops have this charger, and while they're loading passengers, the bus is charging. Mm -hmm. That's blow-your-mind technology. It, it absolutely is, yes. Have you worked on that? We have not, no, no. But it, it, it's, it's, it's fun to see the marvelous things that people are, are creating all around the world and knowing that just the way information and technology uh, flows at some point, uh, things like that will be coming very near to all of us. How do you see the electric utility 10 years out? You know, we have, again, as, as stewards of this essential infrastructure with very long planning horizons, we need to be making investments now uh, that will continue to provide our customers safe, adequate, reliable service as their expectations change. I like the notion, and we plan at Northwestern Energy around the notion of uh, no barriers and no regrets. So we are investing uh, very aggressively, appropriately, in the underlying technology to serve all of our customers, regardless of what direction specific technologies might take. So a platform that can that can support multiple different paths. Is there a website where people can go and see what the Institute for Energy Innovation is working on? Sure, if you go to the EEI website, uh, you can go from there right to IEI, the Institute. One of the things the Institute has done uh, that's really very rewarding is um, uh, an annual conference, Powering the People, uh, held at the museum in Washington, D.C. And then following on that, uh, uh, they've uh, put together now a series uh, of books, Innovations Across the Grid. The book you have in front of you uh, is the most recent in that Idea. series and, uh, and follows up from uh, this winter's Innovations Across the Grid, uh, Powering the People conference. And it's a, it's a great uh, uh, selection of success stories uh, from, from companies uh, all across the country. For young people who are listening and watching, uh, how did you get into this business? What is your discipline? Uh, I, am, I am a lawyer, but I'm uh, probably 10 or 11 steps through the 12-step process. Uh, You're so a recovering lawyer. A recovering lawyer, had a strong interest in public policy, I actually was a regulator earlier in my career. What I love about the people in this industry, uh, natural gas, we're a gas company as well as an electric company and electric both, uh, people in this industry, regardless of position, whether they're in a truck or in an executive office, are so dedicated to public service, so dedicated to doing the right things for their customers and communities, it's, it, it's extraordinary. And it's a hard thing to understand from the outside. Bob, is that because Electricity is good for people. It, people it, get people are affected by the fact they're actually doing something useful. Absolutely, and as I as I mentioned, the Department of Homeland Security uh, recognizes what people in this industry do as as unique among all critical infrastructures because every other critical infrastructure platform depends on the people in this industry doing their jobs. Uh, as, as very best they possibly well, can. Well, in warfare, we've found the thing to do nowadays is take out the power plant and true. half the battle is won, so to speak. Very Bob, true. it's a joy to talk to you. It's Thank a you delight. so it's much. An honor. Thank you. Thank you.